Hello Primary 5, how are you today? I am Sarah, I am teaching science and today we are going to talk about pollution. But before we start our lesson, let's know together what is meant by pollution. Pollution is when the environment is contaminated or becomes dirty with wasted material, chemicals or any harmful substance. As you know Primary 5, in each food web, we have food resources, we have habitat and we have living organisms. Can you guess with me? If the food resources and the habitat of those food web are polluted, what will happen? Super. That may lead to the death of those living organisms and also it may affect all other levels of the food web. As you can see here in this picture, Primer 5, there is a fire in the forest. What will happen if there is a fire in forest? First of all, all plants and all grasses in this forest will die and will be burned. So the animals that depend on those plants or those grasses will die or they may leave to another place. Also, there is ashes and there is smoke. This smoke will affect the animal breathing. So animals may have difficulty in breathing. So if there is a fire in the forest, we will note that number one, ash and smoke spread all over the forest and cover the grasses. Number two, animals may have difficulty in breathing. Now we're going to talk about population changes, but before we talk about that, we sh you should know that population is the number of organisms of one type of species living in an area. So what does that mean? Like we are people or human live in Cairo. The number of people or the number of human living in Cairo, this is called Cairo population. So the number of organism of one type of species it may be human, it may be animals, it may be birds. This is called one type of species living in an area like Cairo, like uh, Giza. This is called an area. So population is the number of organisms of one type of species living in an area. We have factors that affect the ecosystem primary five. We have three factors affect the ecosystem. Number one, increasing or decreasing the amount of water. If we have lots of water, if we have little bit of water, that will affect the ecosystem. Number two, increasing or decreasing the temperature. If the temperature is high or the temperature is low, that will affect the ecosystem. And number three, the climate it changes. Like if the water, if the sea water is cold and it becomes hot, that means climate changes. So the factors that affect the ecosystem, number one, increasing or decreasing the amount of water, number two, increasing or decreasing the temperature, and number three, climate changes. Population is affected by the climate change. If the climate change is suitable, that means the population of the species increases, okay? But if it is unsuitable, that means that the population of the species decreases. That means what? organism would either die or move to another place. If the climate change is unsuitable, that means the population change is decreased and that means the organism would either die or move to another place. As you can see in the two pictures, this is called sea birds. This and this called sea birds. And as you can see here in this picture, this is called Seabirds nest. Seabirds build their nest on the top of the mountain cliffs, okay? And they dive deeply down into the sea to feed on small fish. As you can see in the second picture, the seabird dive deep in the water, in the sea water, to catch small fish or feed on small fishes. Those small fishes, primary five, feed on something called microorganism. Microorganisms float on the surface of the sea. As you can see, this is called microorganisms that float on the surface of the sea. So what is microorganisms? They are organisms that are too small, so we call them micro, microorganism. So microorganisms are organisms that are too small for people to see with only their eyes. So you cannot see with your eyes. They can make their own food. Microorganisms can make their own food. So they are the producers in the marine food web super. Like the plant on the land, they are the producers on land. 
so microorganisms are the producers in the marine food web also they are found in cold water habitats they need this water to survive microorganisms need cold water habitat to survive so what will happen to microorganism if the climate is changed and the water become warm can you guess super microorganism will move towards an area where the water is cooler they will search for the cold water and then the small fishes that feed on the microorganism will also move to the new habitat therefore the seabirds that feed on the small fishes also will move to the new habitat or they will die super so what will happen to the microorganism if the climate change and water become warm microorganism will move towards an area where the water is cooler number two then the small fish that feed on this microorganism will also move to a new habitat therefore when seabirds will not have a food source some of them will move to a new habitat while others will die let's talk about habitat loss but before we get through this habitat loss you should know what is meant by healthy habitats healthy habitats provide organisms with needed resources which are water food and shelter as you can find food you can find water and you can find home so living organism get food water and shelter from healthy habitat each species gets its needs so there will be enough food for all living organism in the food web if there is a healthy habitat that means that all living organism will get enough food for all of them but what will happen if those habitats are destroyed there is no more habitat of those healthy habitats different organism may not be able to survive some of them will die so it will affect the flow of energy in the food web negatively you should know that human activity affects the habitat primary five like what we have four we have four points in the human activities that affect the habitats number one building up more buildings and roads that affect the habitats number two throwing wastes material into water that affect the habitat number three overfishing in seas and oceans that will affect habitats also human activity can affect the weather and non-living factor such as the temperature so human activities can also affect the weather and non-living factor in the ecosystem such as temperature of the ocean water all of those or all of these changes can cause habitat loss which is one of the main causes of extinction super so what are the causes of habitat loss we have four points number one building up more buildings and roads number two overfishing in seas and ocean number three throwing wasted material in the water and number five that human activities which affect the weather and non-living factors such as the temperature of the ocean all of those leads to something called extinction what is meant by extinction that means there is no more living organism of this kind of species like the mammals or the dinosaurs okay this is called extinction as you can see in this picture primary five this is called coral reefs coral reefs are a valuable ecosystem on earth one of the most valuable and diverse ecosystem on earth they provide food and shelter for large numbers of fish and other marine organisms also they are important for tourism where people travel to coral reef for fishing or diving which help increase the visitors and the income of local hotels restaurants and other business so what is the importance of the coral reef two point number one it provides food and shelter for large number of fish and other marine organisms. Number two, it is very important for tourism. If you look carefully for this picture, you can see there is two types or two kinds of coral reef. One is colorful and the other is white. What is the difference between them? 
if the coral reef water temperature is raised, that will cause that the water become very warm. And if the water become very warm, primary five, that means the coral reef will get rid of all the algae living in their tissues. So what will happen if the coral reef get rid of all the algae living in their tissues? That will cause coral reef to turn completely white. So this is the difference between the colorful one and the white one. This is called coral reef bleaching. This is called coral reef bleaching. So coral reef bleaching, that means that the water temperature rises and the water becomes very warm. So coral reefs get rid of the algae living in their tissue and turn or become completely white. What will happen if coral reef are bleaching? The often don't survive. We have two impacts of coral bleaching primary five. One affects the coral and fish community and the second affects the human communities. The one that affects the coral and fish communities, you know that some fishes and some living organism or other marine organism depend on coral reef for food and shelter. If there is a coral bleaching, that means the fish and other marine organisms that depend on the coral reefs for food and shelter may die or move to another habitat super. How about the human communities? You know that some people depend on coral reef and fish for food and that will affect them negatively super. So the impact of the coral breaching, number one, coral and fish communities, fish and other marine organisms that depend on coral reef for food and shelter may die or move to another habitat. And the second one, the human communities, people who depend on coral reef and fish for food will negatively or will be negatively affected. How about the plastic pollution? Plastic pollution affects the marine life primary five. Some of the whales, sea turtles, seabirds and fish often cannot differentiate between real food and plastic. Like this sea turtle, you can see this sea turtle eat or feed on the jellyfish. Some of the sea turtle cannot differentiate between the jellyfish and the plastic bags or the plastic product. As you can see, sea turtle cannot differentiate between jellyfish and piece of plastic in the water. So sea turtle will eat lots of plastic bags or plastic product thinking that it is a jellyfish. So what will happen to this sea turtle? It will get harmed super. So when I ask you how do sea turtles get harmed by feeding on plastic, you will say sea turtles cannot differentiate between a jellyfish and a piece of plastic in the water. So sea turtles eat a lot of plastic thinking that it is a jellyfish, so sea turtles get harmed. If you look carefully at this picture, you will find that the plastic bottle is disappearing, right? But it is not disappearing by number five it becomes smaller pieces. How? Due to the effect of ultraviolet rays or the UV rays coming from the sunlight, those plastic products like this bottle get broken down into smaller pieces. And this is smaller piece is called microplastic. Micro, as it is very small, microplastic. They are smaller than a grain of rice. So, due to the ultraviolet rays of the sunlight, this product or this plastic product get broken down into smaller pieces called super microplastic and which are smaller than super grain of rice. And the coral reef filters the seawater to get their food, right? And if there is some of those microplastic found in this water, that means that the coral reef will ingest those microplastic. So coral reef also get harmed. Do you know primary five that about 8 million tons of plastic are thrown into the marine environment every year, most of them coming from land? And also plastic are very harmful to marine organisms. Why? As they are toxic and sharp. And people can recycle the plastic products primary five instead of throwing them into the sea. This was our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Goodbye.